Hello everybody and welcome back to another studio tutorial, a Roblox studio tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you the terrain editor and all the tools included with it as well as every function of those tools. I'm going to have links in the description that are going to fully describe what terrain is and what it's going to be used for as well as other specifics throughout the video like the import button that's pretty specific. To me, terrain it's like a lag free alternative to making an environment for your game without having to use parts for it. And that's pretty much the developer wiki uh, definition. So let's get right into this tutorial. So the first button or tab we see here is the create tab. And this will give us three tools to use. We have the generate tool, and this will allow you to generate terrain on a large scale after setting applicable settings like its size, position, and or its biomes included in the generation. The size of each of those as you can see right here and if there are cave systems you can turn that on and off with the click of a button you can also change the size and position with these six dots that are surrounding the area on its sides and you can also implement a previous generation by using a seed that you could find in the other settings down here or you can save the current seed that you have here and you can use it later so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys what this does. So I have plains, hills, and mountains selected. That's the default selection, but I'm going to use it just for the sake of this video. You can use any other biome. Sometimes they don't really work that well together, but you can mess around with it. Just have fun with it. So let's click generate here, and we have generated our terrain. So it looks like we have a barely a cave and then a uh, very flat ground, but this is all we need to work with for the video and this will suffice. And that's all there really is to terrain generation, so we're gonna move on to import now. Now sadly, I do not have a height map on me right now or a color map, but I will explain to you what this tool will do for you. So the import tool allows you to implement terrain data that will generate highs and lows based on the height map you implement, and you can also add colors to that. A height map is essentially a 2D or flat image of the terrain that you're making, and it will usually be black and white. The whiter the spot is, the higher that area will come out to be, and the darker, the lower that area will be. Of course, and mixing them would give you something in between or sort of in between the ditches and the high spots. You can also use a color map where, in this case, it is going to specify what terrain is going to be used in specific locations on your height map. So for example, if I had tan in one area of the height map, it would probably come out as sand. And if I had green in another area, it would come out as probably grass or some terrain grass. This will allow you to give some pretty detailed terrain generation as well, and it might look really nice. The next button is the clear button and this will allow you to clear all your terrain. I'm just going to undo that real quick, but it will clear your terrain from the workspace and you can also use the command workspace.terrain colon clear with open brackets. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So you want to go to the view tab and make sure your command bar is open. You're going to come down here and type workspace.terrain colon clear open brackets and then it'll clear your terrain. So the next tab is the region tab and before I get into this I want to let you guys know that there's always going to be an option merge empty or for most of them. This will merge and fill empty space that you're working with when editing your regions of terrain. So the first button is select and with this button you can drag and select a region or area where you want to edit terrain. So if I selected this little block of terrain I could now edit that with these tools. Going on with that, I have the move tool here and this will allow you to move your terrain selection on the X, Y, and Z axis. So you can move it there, here, or like that, X, Y, and Z. Uh, put that back, oh, we might have to reselect it now. I also guess that you have to reselect things when you control Z and undo things because uh, it erases the selection, I guess. The next tool is the resize tool, and this will allow you to scale your terrain selection on the X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, oh, forgot to be on resize. There we go. Just like that, you can scale it in any direction. The next tool is the rotate tool, and here you can rotate your terrain selection on the X, Y, and Z axis, but the problem with this, or if you see it as a problem, you can only rotate 
on 90 degree angles. So your increments are always going to stay 90 degrees. I don't know if there's a way to change this. I'll try and look into it. Or maybe they have it hidden somewhere. But uh, I'll let you guys know that in the description or something. So look for that. The next tool is the copy tool and this will allow you to copy your terrain selection. And now if I go select another area, this will lead me into the paste button and now I can paste that specific selection that I made. The next tool is the delete button and just as I pasted this, I can also delete it and now it's gone. Next and finally for the region tab is the fill button and I can fill my selection with any terrain choice given in the material selections down here. So I can go choose Glacier, click Fill, and now I have a bunch of Glacier terrain just sitting in the middle of nowhere. So the next tab is the Edit tab, and this is a pretty big tab. It's got a lot of stuff in it. And so before I go into what each tool does, I want to go over brush settings and things you'll see throughout each of the editing tools. So for your brush, you can choose between editing with a sphere, cube, and cylinder. With the cube and cylinder though, you can change the base size and height, but with the sphere you can only change the base size. With the cube and cylinder you can also unlock it so they change differently, they change separately the base size and height, or you can keep them locked so they stay the same and, they, and so they change as a whole. You can also change the pivot of your brush and this will change where your cursor is and how the brush will be placed when you're editing. So if I have it at the top, my cursor is going to be at the top and my brush is going to start going into the ground. If I have it at the bottom, it's going to be at the bottom of the sphere and it's going to edit like above the brush or above the cursor. And center is how it's default set and your cursor will be in the center and you can add it below and up top at the same time. You also have these settings to snap your brush to a grid, which will keep your brush movements to like increments on a grid. And also you could have the option to ignore water if you don't want to edit your water biomes when using these tools. Down here in your material settings, you can also set it to auto material if you want to keep the same material as the one you're editing. So let's say I have ice selected, I can click auto material, but it'll stay grass because it's seeing and recognizing that I'm editing grass. Some tools like grow and erode, you can set strengths for your brush and you can also set a plane lock or set a fixed plane. Plane lock will lock your brush to a plane in a similar fashion to how snap to grid works, but to where it'll lock what you're editing on a specific axis. The fixed plane option will allow you to set a plane on the Y axis that you want to work on and it will keep your brush from going below that plane when working on terrain surfaces. And finally, the strength on your brush will determine how extreme the effect of the tool is. So for sake of example, with Grow, if I change the strength here to 1, I think that's how it's default set. It'll be pretty fast and it'll grow on that terrain fast. But if I set it to 0.1, it'll be slow and gradual. Now that I'm done with explaining those settings, we can get into the actual tools and what they do. So first is the add button and with this one you can generate and implement terrain materials through a brush anywhere in your workspace but it works best on a flat surface like you can you can put terrain over here but it's going to be like way over there and it might um, not work out too well but you can go on a part and you can still add terrain. Had to turn off auto material on there because it wasn't recognizing any material but here you can see that it works on any surface and over there as well an empty space. The next one is the subtract tool and with this you can delete or erase terrain your brush passes through or over. So just like this. The next one is the grow tool and this will allow you to add and build up the terrain material you choose to use. Uh, but there must be existing terrain to grow on other terrain. So if it's on the base plate you won't be able to grow in terrain because there's just nothing there. But you can go here and select ice and it will start growing ice from your grass. Similarly, there's the erode button and tool and you can remove and excavate terrain. There also, for the same case, must be terrain. So for sake of example, for the next tool, I'm going to make this rigid and like crevices and stuff and ditches and whatnot. So I can explain what the smooth tool does. And so that leads me into the smooth tool. And with this, you can round out your terrain so it's less sharp or jagged but it will not flatten perfectly like the flatten tool that we'll be going into very soon. 
So now with the flatten tool, you can level out your terrain by bringing it up or removing it. This works best on a fixed plane if you really want it perfect. So if I go over here and it's going to start bringing that terrain up. You also get three settings to work with. This first one, it will flatten your terrain and leave any ditches or cave entrances open and empty. The second one here will flatten only ditches and stuff like that, like these cave entrances as well. And finally, the third will flatten everything and make everything flat, including ditches so like this. And as you can see on the fixed plane, it'll stay bringing the terrain up to that level. The next is the paint tool. And with this, you can choose a terrain to replace another and then drag a brush over it to change what material is showing. So I have grass here. Let's say I want to make it rock. I am now painting rock onto the grass. It will also adjust the geometry of it based on what material you're using. Just like how rock, it's more jagged, so it's gonna end up being that way on your terrain. The next tool is sea level, and this will allow you to select a region of water to bring it to a specific level. And this is really good for erasing massive amounts of water or bringing it up in other areas. And that's what it really means to be a sea level. The last tool we have here is the replace tool. And you can do this through box selection or use a brush to replace your materials. But this will allow you to select one terrain to replace with one other terrain. The specialty of this is that it will only change the material you select, no others. So let's say I have a brush, I want, I'm going to have to paint, oh wait, we already have the terrain to work with. So let's say I want to do it with a brush, I have the source material here which is rock, so I have to select rock, and then I'm going to go to the target material to choose what I want to replace it with, and then let's say sand, and now it will replace only the rock with the sand. So only this rock area got replaced with sand. Or if I wanted to go beneath here, it'll only replace this with sand and not the lava beneath it. Pretty neat. So that sums it up for the terrain editor and the tools you get in there. All the nifty things you can do with that. And really you can carry on with this and do a lot with that, especially with that hype map and color maps. You can do a lot with this, but it doesn't really end here because you can also add and change things in the workspace. Now, if you go to your terrain in the workspace, it should always be there because you're not going to be able to delete it. You can go here, select the terrain, and you're going to get options for your material colors, water color, water reflectance, water transparency, the wave size, and its wave speed. You can also choose if there's decoration for your grass. So here, if you go into the material dropdown, you'll get options for all the colors of your terrain. And so let's say I wanted to change grass. Got to find it real quick. Here we go. I can change the color of my grass now. So if I wanted to wanted my grass to look nothing like grass, I've got blue grass now. Well, there you go. I have dark blue near violet grass. And if I want my grass to have decoration and, to, and it to follow that same color, I can go over up to here to decoration and the grass on top of the grass will also be blue. It's very interesting. And I think, I think it would be really cool if you could also change the decoration grass on top of this grass. So I didn't really show you guys what you could do with water and it's pretty cool. It looks pretty nice and it looks fairly realistic. So we're going to use our region tools here. I'm going to select an area and fill it with water and I'm going to show you what you can change. So now I've filled the block with water, my selection. I'm going to go to terrain and I can change the water color to whatever color I want. Maybe I want blood red water. So once you have your color selected, you can also change the reflectance of your water. The maximum and it's also default set to that is one and I'm going to leave it at that. You can also change the transparency and I like my tr my water being transparent, pretty transparent because it makes it look nicer with the um, environment that you might want to add beneath your water. The next option is your wave size and speed and this will determine how fast your waves go as well as how high your waves are going to be. So this might be pretty cool for some water simulation stuff or if you want to make your game uh, solely based around water or a water game. And that pretty much sums it up for the entirety of terrain. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something new. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, especially if you enjoyed it. Make sure to share this video so you can help me out a bunch and put on notifications if you want to see more tutorials like this. Comment in the comment section if you want to suggest me a video to make or anything you want to see, anything you need help with. Ask questions in the comments, anything like that. 
So I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. The next video will probably be me creating an environment for your build. And in this case, it's going to be for a shed. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to look pretty fun. It's going to be pretty nice. You're going to be able to add trees and yeah, just create your environment, whether you want it to be in a city or in a forest. So I look forward to it and I'll see you guys then. See ya.